previously on the Rod Peterson Show. But you want to talk. So I did a little reading, okay. and now I have my take on the Coyotes Arena situation. They're going to be playing in an arena at ASU, Arizona State University campus in Tempe, that's between 3,500 and 5,000 seats. I've done my reading. I've done my research. It's not to- totally off what I thought, but I did learn some stuff on it. What's your opinion on what the Coyotes are going to do for the next three years? I just think it's a, I think it's a good opportunity for the Coyotes to create some buzz. That's what I think. You know, and I think, you know, it takes the pressure off of ticket sellers and, you know, the branding people to try and fill mm-hmm. 15,000 seats, right? Or 13,000 seats or whatever. All you got to do is try and fill five. Yeah. All you have to do is create a good atmosphere. They could play, and, and I know people say, oh, the rink sucks and it's not a great rink and it's not NHL quality. They could go play in the old Rutherford rink in Saskatoon. I know it's burned to the ground, but a 100-year-old rink with concrete everywhere that fit 800 to 1,400 people, doesn't matter. When, it, when a building is full, there's nothing better than that atmosphere. When the fans are right on top of the players and visiting teams are going to go into a 5,000-seat arena and it's going to be loud if, if you get 5,000 people in there and create an atmosphere. So here's an opportunity to create a really strong brand in the desert. And then when you go to 15,000 seats, you'll pre-sell tickets. There'll be some demand, right? And if this team ever snuck into the playoffs with a 5,000-seat arena, I mean, it, it's, there's a recipe there for some success. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Has Tyler Toffoli spoken yet? And, uh, you know, what's the reaction to the newest Calgary Flames? Yeah, Roddy, he just uh, wrapped up his availability with uh, Calgary Media here. So there's a real buzz. There's a buzz in that locker room right now. And they're getting a really good piece that is seemingly a, a natural fit, Rod. Most people in the city are uh, pretty darn excited to get a player of that caliber. So pretty positive right now. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It sure is. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Canada. Good afternoon to those in the Eastern Time Zone and Canadian sports fans in the United States. Welcome to the RP Show. If I may, right out of the gate, I want to tell you that this episode number 698 of your favorite daytime sports talk show may be the best that we've ever had. I'm not joking. We're broadcasting live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Pretty soon I'll get used to that blasting in my ear. The entrance to the foothills, the gateway to the foothills right here. Um, Great Eagle. Coming up on the program today, Deron Carter, our longtime friend, the newest member of the Edmonton Elks, will be joining us from South Florida on video chat, but joining us live here at the event center at the Great Eagle, the general manager of the Calgary Stampeders, John Huffnagel. Moose is keeping his seat warm right now and his headphones warm as he... Uh, we get ready to welcome Huff to the, sh- to the show, Watershed Day. That's going to be really cool, really cool um, to have Huff down here. And, and I, I'm, I'm interested to see where that interview goes, what kind of conversation you guys have. Um, Me too. But, but bridges are being be- built here. And uh, I don't know what you want to say, but uh, the ice is melting, and it's wonderful. Well, th- there are those still with the Calgary football team that, are hesitant to come down to the Gray Eagle and go on the RP Show Live, but I feel like John Huffnagel joining us live today will he's be like the godfather coming in. If I have to kiss his ring, I'll kiss his ring, whatever it takes. I just think Huff that. coming here will make it good for everybody to come on here. Right. From Calgary football. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And also, right out of the gate, before I get to the serious stuff, uh, our 700th episode will be Friday. If you go and look at our Instagram live from the show, the Rod Peterson show, uh, there's more details on there, but we're going to have a live studio audience. You guys got a sound effect for that? Live studio audience on Friday. Uh, Maybe, maybe not. Right. There you go. Thank you, uh, Rick Regan. We're good. Space is limited. Doors open at 930. Corey, the house operations manager here, we finally got her title. 
She'll be welcoming uh, viewers, I guess, right at the front doors where it says Event Center. Seating li uh, limited. Moose is buying donuts, and if that's not good enough for you, bring your own snacks. That's Friday here at Gray Eagle, and I think that's about all I had other than before we hit the quick six show horn, something dawned on me that I was telling Darren before the show this morning. I was excited to go to the Flames game last night, and then coming home, and then waking up this morning, I was just floating on air for this reason. And when I said that we need to get Canadians going to sporting events, you don't have to do what I ask or implore or suggest that you do. But my God, was I excited to be there. Not just because the fans were having a great time and the concessions were open and the beer lines were flowing and people were getting shittered at the Saddle Dome. They were. It was, it was we were getting back to normal. And, but it's our friends. I was so excited to see our friends. And my friends, I introduced to you, your friends, you introduced to me. And it, it, was, that, it was that social feeling that we're getting back to. I just, yeah. I'm still riding that wave. I know. I know. When, when you're in the building and, and you walk in and you see people you know, you know. We, we both posted, you know, the photo with Rich Sutter. But to see him and he lit up oh, when yeah. he saw us. And we lit up when we saw him. And it was Two friends coming together who hadn't seen each other in a long time. And it's like, okay, come with me. We're hanging out. And, and then you see somebody else and somebody else. And we saw Ryan Leslie. And, you know, and, and it's funny because it's kind of, it's not really a new building for us, but it kind of is. I mean, we haven't been in this town a long time, yeah. especially lately. So we're trying to be respectful and trying to be polite. And they're just like, no, 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 come in. Stop. Why are you run, walking away for? Come visit. Let's visit. Yeah. You know? So it was great. The social aspect of going to sporting events, we're getting back there. And this isn't a Calgary-specific thing. Wherever you are watching across North America, particularly Canada, I tell you what, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that if you go to these games and see your friends, you're going to feel just as good as I did coming home last night and getting up today. It was, it was a lot of fun. So anyways, let's hit the quick six show horn, please, Director Jordan, and let's get down to business. Thank you. There will be no Olympic gold medal or medal, period, for the Canadian men's hockey team. For the first time in 16 years, the Canadian team was shut out 2-0 by Sweden in a quarterfinal in Beijing today. Sweden scored midway through the third period and added an empty netter with minutes to go. Tonight, Canada's women's team will play the USA for gold, and I'll probably watch that game, but let's just talk for a minute about the Canada loss to Sweden this morning. I very rarely agree with Glenn Healy on much of anything, but I do have to say I agreed with his analysis afterwards because the panelists were harping on Canada, not really scoring on themselves, but the winning goal was off a tip, off a defenseman's stick. McBain's fooled the goalie, was Fraser Tompkins, and everybody was going, oh, what an unfortunate incident. Canada scored on themselves. And maybe because Healy's a goalie, he and I look at it the same way. You didn't score any goals at the other end. So let's talk about that. I mean, Healy's like, let's not, let, right now, let's not talk about the fact that the winning goal went in off the defenseman's stick, okay? And I'm like, yes, thank you, Glenn, for injecting some sanity. Canada wasn't that great. In the game or in the tournament, Craig Button sat in that chair right there and says, Canada's not even going to play for a medal. This isn't our top players. And he was right. I know. So I'm not even that upset. Man, Sweden was good. And the thing I noticed that was different than any other international tournament I've really watched is how, you know, tenacious and tough the Swedes were. They checked really tight. There was no room for Canada in the entire game. I noticed it on power plays that they were pressuring Canada so much in the power play yep. that Canada couldn't move the puck around and get set up. They had to work it around in their own zone just to leave their own zone and get into the offensive zone in the power play. I thought Sweden was really good, you know, on the check, and uh, Canada was, had no room. And, and, and that's usually what happens when you're a little bit underskilled, right? When you don't have as much high-end skill uh, that the other team has to respect, they can play you a little bit tighter, and that's what happened, and we couldn't score. Indeed. So Canada coming home from the Olympics without a medal. And wouldn't that be something if Sweden won the gold? In the years ahead, history will show that whether were there NHLers there or not, you really won't. Re you'll remember who won the medal, yeah. and we didn't. And it was this decision not to go. The players decided not to go. NHLers, we move on. USA's out too, so I just feel like there's no reason to watch Olympic men's hockey anymore. Um, hey, hit like if you can. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, share the show. Tell all your friends. 
Start spreading the news. The RP Show is on the air from Calgary this morning with episode number 698. Uh, Canada's... Oh, there's other sports going on at the... Oh, there is? Yeah. Okay. Canada's, unfortunately, at the same time as hockey. How do you expect me to watch both? Canada's Jennifer Jones remains in the hunt for a playoff berth in women's curling. She beat the USA's Tabitha Peterson 7-6, but then dropped an 11-9 decision in extra ends to China's Yu Han. Jennifer carries a 4-4 and record into the round-robin finale against Denmark. Why do we feel like we know these Canadian curlers? I've never met Jennifer Jones. I just referred to her as Jennifer. I know. I feel like I know her. Jen was pretty good this JJ morning. JJ wasn't bad. Uh, Canada's Brad Gushu has already locked up a semifinal berth on the men's side. And how about this? Quick. Who has the most medals for Canada at the Winter Olympics ever? Which person? You, you know. I do. But you won't immediately get her name. Um... No, I won't. I'm sorry, and I don't. I wouldn't get it either. Cindy Clausen. Right. And the reason I bring that up, Canadian speed skater Charles Amelin has finished his Olympic career with a gold. He joined teammate Stephen Dubois, Jordan Pierre, Gil, Gilles, Gil, and Pascal Dion to win the men's 5,000-meter short track relay. It's Canada's third gold medal of the Winter Games and the fourth career gold for Amelin, who's now tied with speed skater Cindy Klassen as the country's most decorated Winter Olympian. How about that? Yeah. Four goals. How about that? And did anybody know the answer to that? Canada sitting fifth in the overall medal standings in Beijing. We got 18 medals, including three gold. Norway leads with 28. How about that? Followed by the Russian Olympic Committee with 24 and Germany with 20. The USA, USA sits fourth. And I don't think they're going to make a late run here. I don't. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, moving on. I can come back more Olympics later. Uh, NHL from Tuesday night. Tyler Toffoli scored in his Calgary Flames debut. And the Flames won their seventh in a row, 6-2 over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Eric Goodbrunson. Elias Lindholm, Matthew Kachuk, Dylan Dubé, and Adam Ruzicka also scored for the Flames, who moved one point ahead of Vegas for first place in the Pacific Division. Not to be outdone, Connor Yamamoto scored the tie-breaking goal with 4.46 to go, and the Oilers beat Los Angeles 5-2 to remain unbeaten under new coach Jay Woodcroft. Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins each had a goal for the Oilers, who are now 3-0 and since Woodcroft replaced Dave Tippett last Thursday. Zach Hyman and Evander Kane added empty net goals, and Mike Smith made 30 saves. The Oilers moved one point ahead of the Kings for third in the Pacific Division. And that is our poll question today, folks, for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Are the J. Woodcroft Oilers for real? Capital Auto Mall with dealerships across the prairies. Last I looked on Twitter, 53% of respondents saying, no, they're not for real. And that included me. I said, no, they're not. 43% said yes. It's only three games. I ask you, watching right now, the Rod Squad, you tell me if you think the Jay Woodcroft orders are for real. If firing Dave Tippett is all it took, wave a wand. Bob's your uncle, and the orders are now Stanley Cup contenders. I say no. This is the traditional new coach bump, the new coach spike. We see it with everybody. Hey, how's the Vancouver Canucks doing lately under Gabby? Really? Right. Um, no, I don't think they're for real. Did you see the first goal on Mike Smith last night? He looked like he was, he looked like he was fishing. Like he was reaching into the lake to pull a fish out. Went right under his glove. And the Oilers are down one nothing. They overcame the play of Mike Smith to win that game last night. Nothing's going to change if the Oilers don't get a goalie prior to the trade deadline. I don't think they're for real. Too early. I can't make a decision yet. You got to vote today. It's too early. What are you voting, yes or no? If I got to vote today, I would say no. Right. But if they turn three into seven or eight games, you know, and they can, you know, win seven or eight out of ten, I think they might be for real. But three games is too early for me to tell. So I would say no. Okay. It must be painful for you to go into the, the voter's box <laughs> at an election. Um, I don't have to make a decision right now. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. Time to vote. It must be horrible for you. I know. Is it really? No, it's not bad. Because you've made your mind up by the time you went to the party. I have to. I have to. I can't. You can't make me make that decision in the booth. I'll sit there for 30 minutes. Uh, Continuing on with NHL one-timers, Sidney Crosby 
scored his 500th goal, and Pittsburgh teammate Chris Letang capped a late rally to send the Penguins past the Philadelphia Flyers 5-4 in overtime. One of my favorite NHL paintings ever is the one of all the 500 goal scorers. Have you seen that one? It's obviously, what would I say, fictional or whatever. Like right. it's Gordon Howe, Maurice Richard, Wayne Gretzky, Marcel Dayon, Mike Gartner. It's a painting of all the guys. Yeah. Drew McGinley's got 500, I think. Right? They, I remember them adding him in. Now you got to add Sid, yeah. which I'm shocked he wasn't there already. I know. When you really think about it. Right. Um, if you haven't seen that painting, I got to show it to you. Yeah. Because very few paintings move me yeah especially in sports that one does. bobby hall all painted they all look great in their prime can you imagine all lined that's up cool. side by side that's yeah cool. so way to go sid i just can't believe that it took that long yeah i know are we, are we sure it's not a 600 right or a 700 <laughs> anyways he was properly feted last night with scoring his 500 then i just love the kid Joe Pavelski scored twice. Jake Ottinger made 46 saves. And the Dallas Stars beat Colorado, ending their 19-game point streak, winning 4-1. In New York, Keandre Miller scored the deciding goal in the ninth round of a shootout. And the New York Rangers edged Boston 2-1 for their third straight win. In New Jersey, Victor Hedman, Nikita Kucherov, and Pierre-Edward Belmer scored in a 3-0-4 span of the third period as Tampa Bay rallied from an early 2-0 deficit to beat New Jersey 6-3. In Music City, Alex Ovechkin scored twice, including his 30th of the season to lead Washington over Nashville 4-1. In Ottawa, Vladimir Tarasenko had two goals and an assist to lead St. Louis over Ottawa 5-2. And in Buffalo, Victor Olofsson scored twice, including the go-ahead goal with 2.55 left in Buffalo's 6-3 victory over the New York Islanders. I feel like we're just opening the lid here on what we're going to talk about today. Again, Deron Carter and John Huffnagel coming up on the program today. Um, we're only two points into the quick six show topics here, so we're going to take a break and come back with more. Number one, I saw it said, uh, somebody in the media said, it's currently a lull time in the CFL. I don't know if you saw yesterday, they sent out a list of critical dates, but this is where they could benefit from my fifth point. You see Rob Gronkowski saying yesterday, he doesn't expect Tom Brady will stay retired for long. Did you see that headline yeah. anywhere? This is where, in my 20 seasons working full-time in the CFL, I would uh, pull the pin on a grenade, thump, and throw it over the Manitoba border or over the Alberta <laughs> border, and get it going. Uh, nobody's doing that. Right. Maybe Duran will today. Ooh. But this is where... Fake news. This is where the CFL could use some fake news. Okay? Get Chris Jones to say something controversial. And then I also have other Olympic stories. Camilla Valieva, the Russian uh, figure skater. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about her positive doping test and the fact she's being allowed to continue to compete. Uh, the Gronk thing, Tuesday in the dub. We got a lot to get to, so we will be right back. You are watching the RP Show live from the Great Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. 
Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital GMC for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or reserve a unit that's already on its way. Get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital GMC in Regina. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. They asked me what I thought was the most beautiful animal at the Calgary Zoo, and I said, the giraffes, they're regal creatures. These hippos, not. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to the RP Show, everybody. It is episode number 698. I always love learning things. And did you know that those hippopotamuses can weigh up to 7,000 pounds? You were with me. And Leanne, and uh, you were saying, well, they're about the size of cows. And I'm like, these suckers are huge right down to the floor. Cattle at least have long legs. You can't comprehend how massive a hippopotamus is until you see it in person. 7,000 pounds. Name me a bigger animal out there on land. Whales probably bigger, but. And I've heard they're incredibly fast and dangerous. Like I didn't want to try. <laughs> like their heads are like gigantic, this big. Like, they are huge, and if they're that fast, oh, my gosh. I know. That was awesome. So, yeah, checking out the Calgary Zoo. I just got to say that, indeed, I'm just in a wonderful mood, and it all stems from going to the Flames game last night, getting out, seeing our friends, the social atmosphere, the concessions were open. The attendance was a little over 9,600, so we're not still 50%, but we're getting there. We're getting there, Yeah, and I feel like we're getting there close. John in Edmonton watching the show, he writes in and he says, uh, Oilers roster moves. Nico Koskinen removed from COVID protocol. Stuart Skinner loaned to the Bakersfield Condors. Hashtag let's go Oilers. Clark had suggested we ask who's the best goalie in the Oilers system. I've said it twice. I'm not moving off of it. It's Stuart Skinner. Please. I would say, Miko, you just stay in COVID protocol. Sort of like what I felt the Cowboys should do with Mike McCarthy. We won without you, Mike. You just... Oilers are on a winning streak. Why are they dabbling with this? I know, right? I guess, you know, the part of it is if Koskinen's... I don't want to say that they're a guy, but if he's their guy, he's got to be their guy. You know? uh, yeah. I don't get it. I I've had a lot of hockey people. I was at an NHL game last night, so you can imagine what was floating around. And they said, have you talked to the Tippets? What, what's the inside? 
And I said, I've talked to the Tippets. Dave's not saying. It's literally, um, give me my money and see you later. Like, just pay me and I'm out. Then why? Well, you know, he's not talking about it. Doesn't feel good to be fired. I've had it happen a few times. Okay, so Dave, Dave's taken the high road. Should surprise no one. And I wonder if Dave Tippett will ever coach again. We, I didn't think he'd coach after Arizona again. So never right. say never. He's a tremendous coach. And that's why, just to circle back again, are the Jay Woodcroft orders for real? We think this every time the orders fire the coach. Which, speaking of former order coaches, I was thinking of Dallas Eakins this morning when I was walking over here to the event center from the hotel, and you're going to bring donuts. Where are you going to get the donuts from for the 700th episode show with a live studio audience Friday here at Gray Eagle? Probably Tim Hortons, only because I haven't explored the local Calgary donut scene. Once I, maybe I'll take a couple of Google. I'm certainly good with Tim Hortons. Yeah, I figured. But I thought, don't pull a Dallas Eakins and put a vegetable veggie tray. (laughs) <laughs> remember when he did that in a donut box or what do you know that he did that with the orders yeah. first news conference that got rid of all the donuts and coffee and he put a veggie tray in there he immediately pissed off all the media in edmonton how do you think that would go over with jerry jones jerry jones terry jones never eaten a carrot in his life <sighs> anyway jim wagner texts in on the 902 line 902-518 3033, the text line, there it is, 902-518-3033. Jim Wagner is watching in Balgoni, Sask, and he says, bring on the huff. Bo is next. Book it. Enjoy the day, everybody. Uh, we will get Bo by Mitchell down here at some point. Shoot, he's got to put his jersey on and model it for it. Huff is like the canary going into the coal mine. If he comes back out healthy and good, he'll tell everybody else, guys, it's good. We can go in. The show is that is, what the show that is saying means? Yeah, a canary send, in a coal mine? You send the canary, and if he doesn't come back out, it's full of poison, toxic gas, so don't send the humans in. I honestly never knew that. I'm pretty sure that's But what you it have is. coal mines around where yeah. you grew up, so it doesn't surprise me. If the canary comes back, it's like the air is good. See what a great team we are? Because I was explaining to him what the phrase, don't look a gift horse in the mouth means. Because I was raised around horses and cattle. Right. You were raised around mining. Coal mines, apparently. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any of those old school cowboy phrases, ask me, I know what they are. Trent's watching in Norway. He writes in and says, Norway here, the cross-country skiing, ski jumping, long track speed skating, and biathlon events are where Norway have most of their medals. May the women's hockey team win the next gold. I'll probably watch tonight, Canada, USA for women's hockey. It's very entertaining. Yeah, I think I'll watch it. Uh, Competitive Hedge podcast is watching, and he says, not Calgary, but Hobo's Donuts in Regina are top tier. They're the best donuts in the world, bro. World. World. But we're not there. Bingo! Roger, Roger Yee, watching in Calgary, says, Crave Cupcakes is a Calgary staple. Or I would prefer crisp meat burritos and hot sauce. Bingo! From Taco Time. Um, at 10 a.m.? We don't have the budget to go with specialty donuts. I'm pretty sure, right? Jeff the Stams fan writes in. He says, I heard someone mention hippos. Are we talking about my ex-wife? Ooh, Jeff the Stams oh. fan. Yee, going dirty. Oh, no. I didn't say it. Ah, Todd Pinkney, one of our P1s, writes in and he says, Dupes, go to Crave Cupcakes on Kensington. That's two now. You're welcome. You will be the king of Kensington. I guess so. Darren, do you know who that is? <laughs> I should. Be, no, it's I don't long know. before your time. Oh, it is? Okay. Al Waxman. Yeah, no. Look it up. Okay. Sometimes I think you're lucky to be that young, and sometimes I pity you. Right. The king of Kensington. Anyways, back on track, if we ever were on track. I'll get back to that CFL dates in a second. Trust me, in this segment, I will. And Deron Carter is coming up. But what I have listed as point four, two legal substances used to improve heart function are listed on an anti-doping control form filled out for Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva before her drug case at the Olympics erupted, according to documents submitted in her case. The World Anti-Doping Agency filed a brief in the Valieva case 
stating that the mention on the form of L-carnitine and hypoxin, though both legal, undercuts the argument that a banned substance, trimetazidine, might have entered the skater's system accidentally. They're losing me here. Combining those with 2.1 nanograms of trimetazine, I can't even say it, the drug found in her system, is an indication that something more serious is going on, says USA Drug Enforcement Agent CEO Travis Tigart. Valieva's positive test came to light after she had led the Russians to a gold medal in the team skating event last week. Russia's anti-doping agency at first suspended her and then lifted the suspension. That led WADA and the IOC to appeal to the CAS, which determined Valieva could skate in the women's event that began Tuesday, and then she finished first there. What? I know, and that's my thing. I have been in and out on these Olympics, in and out. I feel like if it's a timed event... I'm in. Kind of hard to fudge that. Right. Hockey, obvi, but judged events, you lose me because a lot of the coverage coming out has been doping and judging scandals. And you lose me, Olympics, when, when that happens. And it's too bad, but people are going to be people. The thing with this, and, you know, you follow, try and follow well, what was in her system and all this stuff, but the, the part that stood out of the whole, you know, um, description there was that the trace elements of whatever it was were signs that something else was going on, yeah. right? Which means, you know, trying to cheat potentially. And if somebody was cheating, they should be banned and shouldn't be allowed to perform. If it was an accident, if it was a hard thing and that's all it was, then cool, right? I get it. Accidents, if it's not, you know, going to improve performance and, and really, you know, try and skirt the rules. But it sounds like the more you, when you read that, that they were trying to cheat. And so if you're trying yeah. to cheat, you probably shouldn't be competing. One of the viewers on YouTube, Adam Schultz, writes in all caps, why is Russia still there? No kidding, right? They're already uh, competing under an assumed name. I was going to say they're not Russia anymore. <laughs> but what's the difference? Just kick them out forever. I don't, I don't know. The, obviously, that's a rhetorical question. I don't know why Russia is even allowed to compete anymore. Uh... Okay, moving on. So you CFL fans, perk up. Here's your daily CFL talk. Remember we did this a year or two ago. We're going to talk about the CFL every day on this show. And we did. Mm -hmm. Not for, you know, sometimes two hours, sometimes for two minutes. But we'll talk about it every single day. Tell me what other daytime sports talk show is doing that. I'll wait. The Canadian Football League has announced several key dates during the 2022 offseason, including the CFL Combine season, the CFL Draft, and details surrounding training camp. The upcoming regular season kicks off on th uh, Thursday, June 9th, with the Montreal Alouettes visiting the Calgary Stampeders. So there's nothing going on in the CFL now until the regional Combines, which run March 10th, 11th, and 18th in Waterloo, Montreal, Edmonton, Toronto. And the big one is at the end of March in Toronto. And then there's nothing in all of April. And then the draft is May 3rd. Quick. Who's got the number one overall pick in the 2022 CFL draft? I'm going to guess Ottawa. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? I wouldn't have... Got it right either. I always put you on the There's spot. only eight more guesses, I guess. <laughs> what kid dear? Did you know that the Edmonton Elks have the number one overall pick in this year's draft? I never, I didn't know. That was I would have second guess. I would have said Ottawa too. Yeah. So, as I say, I read that article yesterday that uh, from the Canadian press that the NFL stays in the news all the time. And one of the things was the Flores lawsuit. They said, you're going to hear a lot about the Flores lawsuit over the next little while, the racial discrimination allegations and the staffing mm -hmm. capacity and also the tanking uh, allegations. And here's the one thing the NFL isn't afraid of. You can't think they would like to have to defend themselves against those allegations, but they're so big they don't care. I don't think, I mean, Goodell... Never met the man. I've been from me to you away from him. Never met him. Scandal's going to happen. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm sure they wish Flores had not come at them with a the lawsuit. For sure. 
Would you, but is bad news better than no news? I believe bad news is better than no news, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, it really depends where it goes. I mean, the NFL isn't immune to bad news, though. They're not like nobody's big enough that they're immune to bad news as, as big as they are. You know, I think um, the bigger thing that might come out of this, not as much as the, the Rooney rule, the racial discrimination, but the cheating. If you're tanking and if you're throwing games and if there's any actual substance to that, then that's going to be a bigger deal for the league to deal with because then now you bring in sports betters, you bring in money, you open yourself yeah. up to outside very good point outside lawsuits, right? Ooh. Like if you lost a million dollars on a Dolphins game and then you find out they were cheating and, and tanking that game, you might have grounds to sue the team, the league, the sports book. Ooh. I feel like we have to revisit that an hour too. We that's might. a really good topic right there. And lastly, I want to point out in the Western Hockey League last night. The Lethbridge Hurricanes beat the Moose Jaw Warriors one nothing in a shootout. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> At the uh, Sportplex, we'll let Moose go. We'll let DC uh, log in. All right. Deron Carter coming up next. The Brandon Wheat Kings beat the Swift Current Broncos 3-2, also in overtime. Seattle beat Tri-City 4-1, and Portland down Spokane 4-2. I've had people here in Calgary say they watch this show for the junior hockey talk, and I love it. Deron Carter coming up. John Huffnagel in studio. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. 
experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Another look in at the Calgary Zoo. I'm telling you, you got to check it out. Darren, what do they call those things? Not chinchillas. Can you see it on your... Not lean... More cats. Meerkats. How about that? Oh, man. Calgary Zoo is just amazing. I, I highly suggest you check it out, especially if you're coming to Calgary for a CFL game this summer. Maybe you'll see Daron Carter. Number 89 with your Edmonton Elks, D.C., joining us on video chat today from South Florida, D.C. So good to see you, my man. Congratulations on the new deal. How's it feel? Uh, good, man. It's, it's good to be on. You know, I, I love you. I'm, I love being on your show. So, you know, this is a highlight for me. It, me too. I love you too, Jerron. And listen, I knew that your career wasn't over. I, when you sat out that year in 2021, I'm like, I can't wait to see what he's got up his sleeve next. And it's the Edmonton Elks. So you got to tell me how this all went down. Uh, man, uh, really, Coach Jones uh, hit me up. He, he decided to, to come down and meet with me in Florida. Uh, and we've been talking for about a month or two. And, you know, uh, he just said, make sure I make sure I get in shape and, and get ready. And when free agency hit, uh, he said he's going to give it a couple of days. And, you know, he, he kept to his word. And here I am. I'm trying to follow the coverage as much as I can of what's being reported in Canada about what Jones plans are for you. Is it to be a corner like what what's been <laughs> you, you knew I had to bring it up. What's being discussed there? uh man it, it's really uh, everything db definitely uh just any, anywhere i can fit uh, in the secondary um uh, when we were in saskatchewan in 2018 we used to match up and i used to guard pretty much the tallest receiver so you know a- anything that uh coach jones need for, needs for me you know i'm comfortable doing uh you know i just can't wait to get out there and, and, and you know show my skill well, you know, there's a lot of things I can ask you about. I mean, you had a workout scheduled with, in Arizona right before COVID hit, and I don't think that ever happened because of COVID. And then we never really heard anything from you the last two years other than coaching high school ball. I mean, do you have those aspirations anymore, or are you just one day at a time and just excited to be back on the field playing in the CFL? Like, where do you think this would lead? Uh, man, for me, I'm, I'm just excited to be back on the field. You know, I, I was coaching. And, you know, so sometimes uh, the coaching aspect would kill me because I'm not out there, you know, playing the game that I love. Uh, but for me, uh, I think it's an opportunity to, you know, get back and, and uh, just show the CFL, you know, what I'm made of. You know, you can't keep a, a good fella down in a sense. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I'm so the CFL needs you. I feel more than you need the CFL, but you're still only 30. And you remember all those talks we had to run? You said you wanted to play till you're 40, but things change. Is that still in the offing? Is that, again, you're kind of thinking you're just happy to be on the field, but you weren't, you weren't hanging it up, right? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, I feel great. I, I don't feel uh, what you would say as the, the typical 30 uh, year old turning 31. Uh, you know, c- comparison speaking, you know, I- I- I've seen other players go through, you know, this transition from, you know, sort of their prime and into the later years. And I think that uh, the workouts that I-, that I do and me being able to keep my body in, and, you know, I, se- I seem to have pretty good genetics and I, and I stay in pretty good shape. So, <laughs> so uh, hopefully, you know, I-, I can ride it to the wheels fall off. Yeah, well, the- the- here's the thing. I don't mind saying when we were all together that time in Musselman for that event, Mike Davis was there, and Mike goes, Duran has never been hurt. Duran does not get hurt. What's your, is that genetics, or is, what, what's the deal there? Uh, man, uh, I, I would say just a, a lot of stretching, man. Uh, I, I think a lot of people get focused uh, on, on their strength and you know, the football aspect of it, the explosion and everything. 
but uh, your body is only so, so good. It can only handle so much. For me, uh, I always try to stay uh, lean in a sense, so my body doesn't have as much weight to carry, and just always being able to stretch, you know, always staying, staying limber. I'm always stretching, even when I'm sitting here, I'm about to go sit and watch TV after this, I'm gonna be stretching. Well, listen, that catch of yours from KG, right in the left corner of the end zone is still, you don't get TSN Sports Center. it's still, it's the number two catch of all time in the CFL. They keep replaying it over and over and over again. Would you credit, credit that to your coordination, your stretching skills, or all of the above, that particular catch, which will live in infamy? Man, that particular catch, uh, I would have to say it was a little bit of luck as well, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, man, I, I think it was, it's just a, a culmination of just always doing it. Uh, you know, you, you saw me in practice. Uh, I'm always practicing stuff, you know, different one hand catches and just putting myself in an awkward position. So when the, it does come in the game, you know, it's something that I've done before, you know, and so I've attempted that catch plenty of times. Uh, in my life, but never in a game. So uh, for for me, uh, it's just muscle memory. Right. There you go. And I got to ask you this about the coaching thing, because you had told me that you've coached every position on the field and those kids camps growing up in Florida and that you're a better quarterback than probably anything and you can be a kicker too. What was it like coaching a team like you did this year? Was it North Palm Beach High School versus those camps? It's different, right? Like, it, it's different. You're coaching, but as a team, it's different than a clinic. Uh, definitely, you know, um, having to, to, to manage the egos and everything, it, it gave me a better understanding of how to, on how to manage mine. You know, there's so, so many young kids coming from, you know, different, different socioeconomic, socioeconomic backgrounds and everything, it, it, and bringing them together into in, under one team is definitely very hard. And I didn't understand that aspect until I had to do it. And, you know, I, I had about 25 Deron Carters out there. So, you know, that wasn't easy either. <laughs> How about that? And, do you know what? Mm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think that no, you're no, very ahead. lucky. now. Well, now that I think about it, to have had that experience and now come back and play, that's, that's a huge bonus for you. Uh, definitely, man. Just, it, you know, it, it allowed me to take a, a step back and look and see, you know, how I affected teams. And uh, I, I like to say, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big rock in, in a small pond. So, you know, when uh, the ripples start hitting, you don't really see. And, you know, I, I got this chance to step back and, and be able to take a look and, you know, analyze what I need to do. The uh, viewers, I'll just ask a couple questions because we got John Huffnagel coming up here live at the Gray Eagle Resort. We're okay. in Calgary, by the way, Duran. Yours is my favorite town. Um, <laughs> John in Winnipeg wants to know, what made you want to come back to the CFL? Uh, man, I, I, I love playing football at the, at the end of the day. I mean, uh, I would go out there and play a, a flag football game, you know, with, with, with my friends if I needed to. You know, I, I love playing the game. I love uh, just being in the game of football. And any chance I get to be, you know, out there professionally, you know, I'm going to take it. You know, you, I picked up on something you said there. You said managing egos of those kids. This is the one thing that I think you're misunderstood, and I'm very misunderstood. I saw a guy in the Miami airport with a mask that said misunderstood. I almost ripped it off him and want put it on myself um, or give it to you. You don't have an ego. Like, you know you're good. You're like me. I know I'm good at what I do, but I don't think I'm better than anybody else. Like That's a very misunderstood thing about you, I think. like You, you, you don't have a huge ego. I think that's what's given you longevity unless i've read you wrong which i don't think i have <laughs> man you know we, we've talked about it and and uh somebody somebody's got to be the victim and, and you know and people in people's heads uh they, they see my fire and, and they and they be like oh no man i don't i don't like him but if you were to get it from tom brady or bo levi mitchell you know they'd be like oh man he, he's inspiring the team so it, it's I'm, my goal is to just stay out of that. Uh, I'm not even on social media <laughs> at, at this point. So you know, my goal is to just uh, man affect the team as much as I can in a positive way, 
uh, in the team, you know? Well, DC, I got to – listen, I'm working with a life coach in South Beach. One day I'll, I'll uh, introduce you to her. She's awesome. Actually, yeah, two of them. Okay. Another one in Boca Raton, uh, Jolie. She, Boca Raton, Jolie, and Lisa's in South Beach. And they said, walk with the people that support you. And you know that I'm on that walk with you. Um, one more. Craig Campbell from the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto says, one heck of a catch that took me out of my seat. Glad my wife and I were there at Mosaic Stadium to see the Argos and Riders game. Great stadium and atmosphere. Yeah, that is an all-timer from our guy, DC. And in 2022, he's back to do it again. I'm going to let you go. We're going to move Huff in here, Duran. So enjoy the rest of the offseason. Uh, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll do it again soon. I appreciate it, man. Have me back. Yeah, absolutely. The great Deron Carter checking in from gorgeous South Florida. John Huffnagel coming up, the general manager of the Calgary Stampeders. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus TV network, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital Ford for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or check out our in-stock F-150s on the lot right now. Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today.
as you see a little skiff of snow at Calgary Zoo and the flamingos sticking around. You got to check it out next time you're in Cowtown. We are broadcasting live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. We're going to be here until well into March. As a matter of fact, March 18th, Air Supply here at the Event Center. March 20th, Foreigner. And on May 28th, the godfather of redneck comedy, Jeff Foxworthy, right here at Grey Eagle. Just be following the show, everybody. We'll be doing ticket giveaways. Come join us down here. And speaking of joining us down here, this Friday is our 700th episode of the Rod Peterson Show. We're going to have a live audience here at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Doors will open at 930 at the event center. Looking forward to seeing you. So we just had Deron Carter on the air live from South Florida, and the viewers are going nuts. I got to read some of them here. Jeff the Stamps fan says, all I have to say regarding Deron Carter is we will see how it goes. Color me skeptical. But Wayne watching in Victoria, B.C. right now says, I think Deron has matured and will probably be a much better player because of that maturity. I'm telling you, if you didn't see the interview with Deron Carter, you, you probably should go back and watch it because, as he said, coaching now has changed his life, and he just had to manage 25 egos and coach 25 Deron Carters. You think that maybe hasn't changed his perspective a little bit? And now he's coming back to the CFL to play with Edmonton. My cousin Christine is watching in Medicine Hat. She says, seems like an honest, outstanding guy. Yes, that's Deron Carter. And we're also happy to have him back in the CFL. John in Winnipeg says, great interview, Rod. Wasn't me, it was Deron. And uh, one more, uh, Jeff the Stamps fan says, wow, Huff, your biggest in-house guest ever. That's the truth. So coming up after the break, top of the hour, John Huffnagel, the general manager of the Calgary Stampeders, will be joining us here. So we do this every day. Taco Time, viewer takeover, Taco Time with over 120 locations right across Canada. We appreciate their support here on the RP Show. I do want to do a sports update. There's breaking news today. The 2022 Memorial Cup will begin June 20th in St. John, New Brunswick. The Canadian Hockey League announced today the tournament will open with the host St. John Sea Dogs facing off against the Ontario Hockey League champion. The Memorial Cup Championship game will be held on June 29th. The member hasn't been held the past two years due to the global pandemic. One minute remaining, they tell me. One minute remaining in hour one of the RP Show. Canada's Charles Amelin capped his Olympic career with a gold medal today. The 37-year-old helped Canada win the men's 5,000-meter short track speed skating relay in Beijing. That ties in with Cindy Clausen for the most Winter Games medals by a Canadian. Canada will secure either a gold or silver medal in women's hockey tonight. The Canadians meet their arch rivals, the U.S., in the final. Canada defeated the Americans 4-2 in the preliminary round as goalie Anne-René Debien Stop 51 shots. The men's hockey team won't be playing for a medal. They lost the quarterfinal this morning, 2-0 to Sweden. And the Flames put their seven-game win streak on the line tonight when they faced the Anaheim Ducks at the Saddle Dome. Tyler Toffoli scored in his Calgary debut as the Flames dispatched Columbus 6-2 last night. Elsewhere tonight, Winnipeg host Minnesota. John Huffnagel coming up live an hour two after this quick break on Game Plus TV. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Number 16. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino.
Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flametech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital GMC for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or reserve a unit that's already on its way. Get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Has Tyler Toffoli spoken yet? And, uh, you know, what's the reaction to the newest Calgary Flames? Yeah, Roddy, he just uh, wrapped up his availability with uh, Calgary Media here. So there's a real buzz. There's a buzz in that locker room right now. And they're getting a really good piece that is seemingly a, a natural fit, Rod. Most people in the city are uh, pretty darn excited to get a player of that caliber. So pretty positive right now. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and uh, it is a very exciting time in Calgary. The Flames have won seven in a row, and they've got Anaheim in here tonight. And now we're going to switch gears a little bit in hour two, which is brought to you by Great Western Original 16 Beer. Original 16 Beers are found across Western Canada, and if you're lucky, there might even be one in your fridge. Purchase at a store near you today. We're live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. It's true. We're going to be here for five weeks. This is the first of five weeks. We're broadcasting live from this lovely facility here on the Sutina Nation just outside Calgary. And uh, it is an honor. I'll, I'll say it. John Huffnagel, the general manager of the Calgary Stampeders, joining us down here at Grey Eagle. Huff, uh, good to see you. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm fine, Rod. Uh, great to be here. Thanks for the invite. And five weeks of Rod Peterson in Calgary? Are you kidding me? Can we handle it? Do you think we can? Will, we, will I last five weeks, Huff? What do you think? I don't know. Man. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, have you been down here at all to this facility? This is something else. This Yeah, grade. it is a great facility. We've had uh, Stampeder poker tournaments down here uh, several times, and they just do a great job. Actually, they've told me. So this place has been here 14 years, and they've sponsored the Stampeders every year through 14 years. So they're right. big stamps, backers yes, here. they yeah. are. And uh, coming here, I automatically went in the wrong doors. I went to the casino. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. But they found you? <laughs> they got you in here. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. But it's just automatic. I'm going to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, very busy place, too, by the way, Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. And now with the restrictions lifting, um, the, the rinks are getting fuller. The football stadium will be full by this summer. And Huff, that's where I guess where I'd like to start. I mean, getting through the 2021 season, I think that the CFL did, well, obviously a tremendous job getting through it. 
Couldn't have been. Do you have a few more white hairs uh, <laughs> after dealing with this the last two years? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, no question about it. And kudos to uh, everyone involved in the league, uh, staff, players, you know, trying their best to follow the protocols to make sure that we got the, the season completed. And uh, just a fantastic job. Are you back to business as normal in the CFL or no? Oh, as uh, close as we go, we have been in a long, long time, and uh, the future looks bright. So uh, I think everything's going in the right direction, and that uh, we'll, everything will start uh, on time, and Good. everything will be normal. Right. So we're, would you say we're through free agency? Are you done there or what? Uh, yeah, uh, mostly. I mean, we, we signed another player today, and we'll probably – one or two other ones, but uh, truthfully, uh, our work was done before free agency mm -hmm. started. Uh, uh, we put a lot of work in trying to retain as many of our uh, pending free agents uh, uh, that we could. I thought we did a decent job with it. I think we have a good core of players coming back, and I'm excited uh, for the season to start. Well, you know, you and I have had these talks before. You said it. Calgary is a wonderful CFL town. They love their Stampeders and they're paying attention to what you're doing. And they said, Huff, this is the football observers, right? Whether it's alumni, fans, media, that you really zeroed in on that offensive line. That was your first priority here. So you're happy with how you came out of it? Yeah, I mean, we've always uh, spent a lot of um, effort in making sure that we can keep our quarterback standing. And uh, I was pleased the way our offensive line performed last year. Uh, we have everyone coming back except our left tackle, and we place them with Derek Dennis. And uh, Yacamre is a very versatile, great person, good football player. Uh, just didn't work out, and uh, we were able to uh, re-sign Derek Dennis. Right. Yacamre was looking for a better payday, I assume. Was that the deal? Well, there, there were some things with uh, Yacamre. Uh, he, uh, he had a little bit of a knee problem. I'm not sure where the, what the state status of that is at this time. Uh, and we just didn't want to take that chance. You know what's interesting is I got to know Derek Dennis real well when he was over in Saskatchewan. And he was on our show a few weeks ago. And I said, Derek, if you had to do it all over again, would you have never left Calgary? And he said, he would have stayed if he, yeah. he would have. You keep welcoming him back. <laughs> yeah, this is the second time we, uh, we brought him back. You're, you're right. And, uh, you know, Derek's a good football player. Uh, he and uh, our offensive line coach, uh, Pat Delmonico, mm -hmm. have a great relationship. Pat's a great football coach, and he really uh, works hard getting the best out of his players. Mm -hmm. Well, so you mentioned last season and keeping your quarterback upright. Bo and I, my goal is to get him here. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I'm working on it. And uh, you just go down in Texas. <laughs> that's what I have to do. Katie, I've been in his hometown. He's a very big deal in Katie, Texas. There's no doubt about that. Can you say the extent of his broken leg last year, or, or would you care? Like I was saying, when, when he came out, it was that Argo game, right? He was doing pivots and jumping, and I guess the thing was broken, but you wouldn't know to watch. Like it was, a, it was tough on him. Yeah, it, he had a difficult year last year. Yeah. Not only with his, his leg, uh, he had a, a, a pulled groin muscle during training camp, which limited his time on the field. Uh, he had some lingering problems with his shoulder. Uh, the, the leg is fine. Uh, he's on a special uh, strengthening program for his shoulder, and we're hoping that uh, we'll have a healthier version of Bo this year. Did it heal faster than you thought? Like he came back ahead of the six weeks, as I recall. For the leg? Yeah, the leg. Oh, yeah. it was a hairline fracture, so oh, right. I'm not so sure it was any faster than what normal would be. Right. Well, i got to tell you something. Um, you know, this may or may not surprise you, but Wally was on this show, and I said if there was anything that he hadn't done that he would have liked to do, and he said I would have liked to have coached Bo Levi Mitchell because he said he's special. I don't know if Wally's ever mentioned that to you or not, but what is no, it about Bo that is so special? I, I think a lot of people would say that, uh, coaches especially, uh, people in the know, because of all the things he does so very well. You know, and a very smart individual, keeps his composure. Uh, if you want to try to blitz him, uh, watch out. Right? And, you know, it, it, it came to, uh, to be where teams would just uh, put as many people back in zone and uh, – 
try to make them impatient and uh, win the football game that way. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, I asked Jones about that. I said, why don't you blitz him more? And, you know, Jones, he's like, I can't. <laughs> you know, he got mad. He's exactly what you're saying. But I've been around athletes a long time, just like you. Both seems like the kind of guy that hates to lose more than he loves to win. Would that describe him in a way? Maybe. Uh, I, I think that uh, the passion for winning uh, always, always uh, is, is, is the deciding factor there. But uh, hating to lose gets you ready to win. And uh, that's the thing. Uh, football is a grind. You know, not only is it a, a, a long season, but each and every week it's a new challenge. And you really can't waste a day. You have to put the work in, and that's what Bo does especially when it's a 14-game season. Did you see a real difference last year with your approach to the season and then in season that it was four games less than normal? Did it change how you guys did things? Yeah, a little bit. I, I the, the biggest uh, change was the training camp aspect mm -hmm. of it, no preseason games. Uh, you know, we knew we were going to be a young team going into last season and uh, not having the preseason games hurt at every team. But, uh, you know, it, it's tough when you're making decisions on young players that never played Canadian mm -hmm. Football League, uh, in the Canadian Football League, or played a game, and making those type of decisions, you just hope you make uh, more right ones than wrong ones. Well, speaking of special players, and I want to ask you this now, because I don't want to forget, Tom Brady. I've read your bio a million times. How did I forget that you were in New England in 03 and won a Super Bowl? but I was watching the documentary when I was in Florida on Tom Brady, man in the arena. And it goes season by season through his career. It's amazing. You got to see it. But 2003, here's Tom Brady sitting on the grass at a practice in Foxborough with his position coach. And I'm like, that's Huff. <laughs> Did you have a lot of moments, just you and Tom? You must have back then if you were his position well, coach. I, I really enjoyed uh, coaching Tom. Just a, just a tremendous person. And, uh, I'm just glad I didn't screw him up. <laughs> right. I'm sure you tell everybody that. Yeah. But is there a different Tom Brady, the one that we see, versus – and he's a different man now than he was then probably. Yeah, I, I haven't kept in touch with Tom. But, no, he's a complete gentleman. Uh, just a, a, a great teammate, a, a great person, very polite, uh, and a, a great pro. So uh, during that TV show, I'm kind of surprised you did recognize me because my hair was a lot darker. No, <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised. I, I, would, I leapt off the couch. I'm like, that's up. <laughs> but you coached him seven Super Bowls, and you probably just watched all the coverage from L.A. last week. Like, they're saying he's the greatest NFL player ever. You coached him. Is he, do you think? I mean, he's got the rings to prove it. But. Yeah. No, do I think he's yeah. – uh, uh, if he's not, he's, he's up there. I mean, uh, what he has accomplished is just truly amazing. You know, um, it's be a long, long time before someone does it better. Uh, but right now, he has done it the best. It would be hard to argue that he's not, right? Yeah. But, but he's a big man. I don't think people understand his sheer size. Right. I guess what makes him so good? His, uh, uh, he's a grinder. I mean, uh, in the offseason, he's in the weight room with all his teammates uh, in the offseason program. Uh, when I was with him, he never missed a practice. Uh, always in the meeting rooms, first guy in the, in the meeting room, the last guy to leave the stadium uh, after practice. So he, he puts the work in, he gets himself ready to play, and his God-given ability takes over. Mm -hmm. Plus, he's got a pretty good head coach he's working with. Right. <laughs> that helps winning. Good defense helps, too. But that was 20 years ago, John. Like, did you see his career unfolding that way back then? I mean, you could never tell the future, but did you see greatness in him then? Well, I think you saw greatness his very first year when he uh, took over for Drew Bledsoe mm -hmm. and led him to a Super Bowl. And the way they won that Super Bowl game, you know, because they had a, 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 to win it in the last drive of the – uh, of that game and so he's got great composure uh, great vision uh, throws very accurate and uh, does the right things at the right time mm -hmm. well I gotta ask you too so again you've got the great college resume NFL resume CFL resume what is it about Calgary and the CFL that's made you want to stick around for so long well, when I came back, uh, I was very, very pleased it was Calgary because uh, I spent 20 years uh, previous 
uh, in the city of Calgary. Sure, I played for other teams, the mm-hmm. Saskatchewan being one of them, and Winnipeg and Calgary. But uh, uh, it was my second home. I had a lot of friends here, and it was an e- easy marriage to get back into uh, because of all those things I've just said. So the fact that we do have sound ownership, uh, we, you know, Calgary is just a fun Fun city. Yeah, I think a lot of players uh, like to play for Calgary because of the type of city and the environment that uh, it presented to them. So, and they stay after their career. But I was just in L.A. last week and had Cam Judge on the show. He was sitting there just like this, and he said that Dicky sold him. He goes there. He goes. I had to go to Calgary. It was so great. Were you part of those talks with Cam Judge? Well, what about it now? Well, he just said how much you guys sold him on right, this know. city, this franchise. No, I mean, Dave did most of the talking with Cam. Uh, so, But he was very, very excited about being in Stampeder. Yeah, you got a great one there in Cam Judge, which you know, obviously, right. as a player. But he's a really, really good guy. Um, what else did I have for you, Huff? That's kind of rounding it out, to be honest with you, other than you got to tell me about Jake Mayer. These Stamps fans are all over me about... Tommy Stevens, they're like, what are they doing signing? You got two great quarterbacks already yeah. in uh, Bo and uh, Jake Mayer, but I said competition. Bobby Vespasiani said it. Better is better. We're always signing great players. That's right. Is that the story behind well, Tommy oh, Stevens? Yeah, I mean, you, you're not going to go to camp with just two quarterbacks, okay? Uh, we'll probably come into camp with four. Uh, I'm glad Tommy signed up with us. Uh, he has a unique. Uh, uh, talent i mean uh, he he's a guy that maybe can use in a different type of style of offense and uh, you use all his talents if he gets into the game Mm -hmm. well this is what i say and i shouldn't have been surprised with what jake mayer did he was setting records last year as you know right out of the gate and i guess with you dave mark mueller and before that dinwiddie on staff you know quarterback Right? So, I mean, you knew what you were getting in Jake, I assume, when he took the field. Well, that was the hard part because he didn't play a preseason game. Yeah. You know, we, we, we knew that uh, he, he loved to throw the football. He had great vision. Uh, he, he'd throw the ball into tight windows, uh, had the arm to, uh, to play in the Canadian Football League. But you never know until the lights go on uh, as a professional. Uh, and he got thrown in uh, yeah. without uh, uh, a previous snap. He was a starter because of Bo's injury and did a tremendous job for those three games. Well, Cortez says he'd prefer you had two years before you start your first game. <laughs> Jake didn't have that. I think he had a 300-yard game in his first game. He had three, he th- had three in a row. He's the yeah. first, first quarterback to do that. That's what I'm saying. Right. So yeah. he's a stud. Yeah, uh, And I will also just say this. Danny Austin said to me, and I think this is true, that you guys kind of went through a mini rebuild the last year or so that nobody really noticed because it's the Calgary Stampeders. But you lost a lot of receivers, right? You got some new – would you say you've been through a rebuild and you're back at the top here well, the last – Well, I alluded that to that about uh, the fact why training camp was so difficult for us because we – we're going to be a young team mm-hmm. and we need to rely on some young players uh, to you know, make an impact and not having preseason games uh, affected that a bit. Uh, but, you know, we got off to a poor start. Fortunately, we regrouped as a football team. I thought our coaches did an excellent job during that first break uh, to uh, redefine and focus on the important things and uh, make sure that the players understood what those important things were. And then we got on a roll. We, we won one, we won two, then we won a bunch, you know, and got back into the playoff yeah. picture. Well, we've been here long enough, uh, two weeks last month, and now we're here for five weeks. I'm hearing it. Stan Peters, first place. It's coming again. They're, they're on board here. So that's nice to hear, right? Well, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get ready. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Huff, I appreciate this. This has been awesome, and uh, we'll be seeing you lots, I hope. You're very welcome, Rod. John Huffnagel of the Calgary Stampeders. We'll get the moose back in here after this break. You're watching the RP Show live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
Nestled in the scenic Coppell Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital Ford for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or check out our in-stock F-150s on the lot right now. Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. They're really sticking their necks out there <laughs> at the Calgary Zoo. I don't have a hippo joke. Do you, Moose? I don't have one. No. Moose? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm just so pleased as punch with that interview with John Huffnagel, the Calgary Stampeders general manager. And Moose DuPont already has some stories here. I just want to read a couple of uh, viewer messages here, if you don't mind. Good idea. Um... We're at Jason in Red Deer. Great chat with Huff. Such a down-to-earth guy and funny, too. Uh, he is, from the little bit of what I knew of him before, uh, I thought that he was a funny guy, even more so now. Uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, Rod, that interview puts you right up there with Jim Rome and Roy Firestone. How about that? I appreciate that, but that's only because it's Huff. wasn't anything that I did, as always. From my cousin... Christine in Medicine Hat, she says, great interview. Only four more months to camp. And Dan in Winnipeg says, Rod, you should come to Winnipeg for a Jets game sometime. Well, it's a sponsorship deal. That's why we're in Calgary. And what does Corey say, Darren, the uh, house operations manager here? What does she say? No, f no, no money, no funny. She's a comedian. And whenever someone says, tell me a joke. No money, no funny. No money, no funny. You pay us to come. We get a sponsorship <laughs> deal. I would love to come to Winnipeg for a time. But I'll tell you right now, in this town, it's bumping, to use Darren's term. Flames have won seven in a row. Huff says we're back, and we're going to be on the top. And Gino has written in the voice of the Oilers, and I want to get to him in a second, but you had a 
funny John Huffnagel story or two well, just from today. You no, know, it was great meeting him, and he's walking in with, with me, and I'm like, okay, we can go in and sit down. I think Rod's in a commercial break. He's like, oh, he's hanging out with all his friends, I see. <laughs> Nobody in the building, right, just by himself. And I'm like, well, he's got a lot of friends in Calgary, and, and John laughed and like that. So, yeah. Are we ever going to get over this? Is it, is it fun now? Like, it's... Well, I've, I've said it so many times. Eh, okay, yeah, I did, I did hate the Stampeders. I'm not going to say that I didn't. But I don't anymore. And it was all WWF show business stuff, for the most part. Right. That's what I feel. Right. But I guess if they're not going to get over that, we should just... <laughs> Pack up our gear and leave. I don't know. You know, if, if, if people were hurt by it, and I get it, and, you know, obviously people didn't like you either, um, it's hard to get over that stuff. But th- these are good starts. We're taking steps. I think we're moving forward. Uh, you can't rush it all at once. Yeah. You can't close on the first transaction, right? As a certified recovery coach that I am, can I tell all of you, not just the Calgary, we need to get over things in life. Because it will eat you alive. We got to get over things. Write it down. Uh, Gino from the Okotoks Orders says, What's on the uh, docket for the rest of the week, boys? Also the next five weeks. Well, several invitations, if I may, May or may not go to Cochrane for a Junior A game Thursday night. I'm not sure. Tonight I'm hosting another television show, The Recovery Hour. So I can't go to the Flames and Ducks tonight, which is unfortunate because I would really like to go to that game. The the vibe in the Saddle Dome last night was unbelievable. I know. Really cool. And I'm getting messages in on the photo. Um, saying, Which one? You guys, of, of, with you, me, and Rich Sutter from the game last night, that said, you guys are good luck. Every time you're in the building, the Flames win. That's a fact. It, it is. I said, I'm here for it. I'm good with that. So tonight I got the recovery hour. Tonight, probably, or it's Canmore, I think, for the team. I'm not sure. One day at a time. Mm-hmm. Friday night, Roughnecks, doing that for sure. Saturday, I'm going to Red Deer to broadcast the Winnipeg Ice and the Red Deer Rebels. And then I'm, I haven't looked past Saturday. <laughs> right. I, mean, I swear to God, I have not. Uh, where else? Listen, folks, you tell me where you want us to go from here because I feel like I've done all my work today. Interviewing John Huffnagel, not that it was difficult, but it was a big interview that I had a lot of build up. And, yeah, there's a lot of build up. Yeah. And I thank him and I thank the Calgary Stampeders for lining it all up. Oh boy, I just opened up the text line. As you can imagine. Well, let's go. From the snowman. Brian Snow writes in, says, love watching you guys in Indiana. He sent a screenshot. Well, uh, yeah, they love the CFL talk down there for sure. Craig in Calgary. Where the heck is it? Where the heck is it? Oh, you sent the alert out to everybody that Huff was going to be on? That's right. So they're probably replying. Okay. Regarding the Olympics, this is Craig in Calgary. So I, I... My mind was blown for a second there. I see. And by what I said that the Olympic scandals with the doping and the judging scandals is turning me off the Olympic. Craig says, judging by its nature is subjective. So no matter what, you're going to have people disagree rightly or wrongly with the results. But it doesn't take away from the incredible accomplishments from the athletes, especially in figure skating where the athletic scores are actually quantifiable and not just judged. Just got to defend a favorite sport of mine. Welcome back to Calgary, squad. That's from Craig in Calgary. And I spent far more time on this than I should have in terms of reading uh, the story of Camilla Valieva. But a long time United States figure skating judge. This was in the USA Today, okay. which I read uh, this I read it every day, but this morning... I learned that those jumps and everything have assigned points, and it's kind of hard to screw them in the, in the judging. But this guy said Camilla should have finished third based on the system they have for judging, and she finished first. So they're still saying that it wasn't right. right. And there was some monkey business going on. 
That's a turnoff factor to me. Yeah. And to my, well, we're sitting here in cowboy country. My brother was a competitive rodeo cowboy. One thing that he said was he always enjoyed rodeo because it's just him against the clock. Right? Yeah. But my thing was, well, because I'm always a pain in everybody's ass. I'm like, well, there's also a horse and a steer and sometimes a calf involved. So it's not just you and the. (laughs) (laughs) And they're all different. That's what I mean. Not just, you know, I'll shut up. Yeah. Randy uh, in the peg writes in and he says, sorry, Jets. What is it? Glad you enjoyed going to the Flames game. Randy in the peg. I'm going to Jets Oilers on Saturday. I believe it's full capacity. That's how we opened the show today, where I just said, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do, but if I can in some way be an influencer or have some influence, go to your local sporting event. Get out of the house. Because I'm still bouncing on air from going to the Flames game last night and just seeing our friends and being around everybody. Barry... Oh, they're all responding to your huff text. That's what it is. See, they're all writing me back, and I don't know what the hell's going on. Deb in Tirana says, I'm watching. Smiley face emoji. Cinny in Pittsburgh watching. She says, thank you, Rod and Darren. I love these alerts. I get busy and distracted. This text cell line was a great addition. To an already fabulous show. Have a great day, guys. That's from Cine in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Huff's hometown. And it all turned out nice again. Wonderful. Who told you that we are every, every time we're in at a Flames game, they win? Who mentioned that? Uh, Kirk, who we met at the Shark Club the first time we were there watching the, uh, the Rams and the Bucks. Kirk works there, or he was no, a patron? he was a patron. Oh, Kirk, Kirk Sirota. Sirota. Good. You remember the last Wynyard name? Winyard guy. Yeah. His mom's Dolores, the curling legend. Like, right? Yeah, the, I'd love to. Someone's going to crack your skull open when you go and just have to take <laughs> a look around. an absolute Rolodex. Sometimes I get really upset at what goes on in my noggin, and I go, wait a minute. As I've been coached by my life coaches, it's a beautiful mind. It's capable of things that... Nobody else is. Did you see Bruce? Also, Al- some really weird things going on, too. Bruce Almighty, you know? Uh, Jim Carrey? Yeah. No. And Morgan Freeman? And he pulls open the file drawer, God, right? And it's all of the prayer and everything. And, and the thing just goes on forever. And he looks, there's like, the wall is only this thick. Where was the drawer? But that's your mind. It's just infinite numbers of files. It's a fact. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's draining. <laughs> it's exhausting. I can times. imagine. Uh, to the bat phone, i.e., The comment section here. Uh, And by the way, Hour 2 is brought to you by Great Western Original 16 Beer. Jeff Cabillas in Winnipeg says, uh, to be honest, I've been more interested in the women's team than the men's team these Olympics. Those girls are fun to watch. And I would agree uh, with that. I was pretty happy watching Jordan Wheel, but for Canada this morning. Mm -hmm. This is a problem that we have with hockey. And because we in Canada, we're all coaches. We all played the game. In my case, played the game, ref the game, coach the game. I think we know the game inside out. And we can all agree on everything. So, for instance, Jordan Wheel. Did you see the penalty he took today? He knocked a stick out of the defenseman's hands in front of the net. Yeah. And Mike Johnson, my guy, says ticky-tack penalty on... Jordan Wheel. I'm like, you can't slash a guy's stick out of his hands. It's a penalty. How, why would you call that ticky tack? And I'm like, Jordan, what are you doing? It's a 0-0 game in a quarterfinal. Yeah. And that's the one beautiful thing about hockey that's different than a lot of other sports. There's a lot of black and white penalties, and that's one. Another one is shooting the puck out of play. Black and white. Black and, oh. and the thing about that penalty is Canada was really had Sweden hemmed in the zone. They were tired. They'd moved into kind of a five-man penalty-killing box, and Canada was working it around, and all of a sudden they got the puck on the wall with lots of room, and the whistle goes. I'm like, <sighs> you, that's an undisciplined penalty. You can't take that penalty. A good opportunity to score, and that might have been their best chance. And that's never been Jordan 
Trust me, I always called them the two Jordans with my beloved <laughs> Regina Pats, Eberly and Wheel. Everybody forgets that Jordan Wheel had way more points than Eberly, but Wheel played a lot more games. But anyways, and then it was about, Cora, I'm watching the game, Canada, China, uh, China, Canada, Sweden this morning, and I'm thinking if they score on this power play, it's going to be on Wheel. Like he might have cost them the game here. Mm -hmm. And then on the ensuing face-off, Lander takes down the Canadian center, and he gets a penalty, and then Mike Johnson's saying, that's a makeup call, and maybe it was. <sighs> Far be it for me to uh, argue with Mike Johnson, my favorite hockey analyst in the world right now. They were both bad penalties, which takes me back to our discussion earlier, and I guess we got a lot of time here because we got our guests out of the way. Um, I'm just reading the comments here. Squirrel. <laughs> Jason in Red Deer says, hit me up on Saturday, Rod. Would love to meet you in person. I'll buy the coffee. Well, I'll be at the Centrium, not making any promises. I'm going there for work, not social. That's the one thing people don't ever understand. We're working here. It's not a party. Although on Friday, it is a party. Darren's buying the donuts. Our right. 700th episode's right here at Gray Eagle Event Center. And Bo Levi Mitchell will be down here serving donuts and coffee. That part I made up. <laughs> but the donuts in the live studio audience is true. That's right. When I said that we would get Bo down here, Huff didn't exactly act like that was going to happen. No, he, he <laughs> asked if you went to Texas. <laughs> he got uncomfortable. Oh, this is what we're going to do. Okay. Got the train back on the track. So Mike Johnson says on the air, that's a makeup call. I don't understand what you're allowed to say and what you're not. One thing I've realized about Mike Johnson is the man's Teflon. He can say whatever the hell he wants and nobody gets mad at him. Right. I don't know why that is, and that's great. I say anything, and I face the firing squad. I also don't understand what that's about, but whatever. Tim Peel got fired as an NHL referee. For admitting on a live mic that they make uh, make makeup calls, which we all know, I thought that was a given that everybody knew that. So when Peel got fired by the NHL, what was the statement from Bill Daly? We have to protect the integrity of the game, i.e., we can't let on that there's makeup calls. And then every like I was astounded for days. It took me a long time to figure out what the hell was going on here because we all know this happens. Right. And then, like, Dave Poulin came on the air from TSN. He's like, no, Rod, that, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't know that that happened. But it does. You know what I mean? Right. So when we come back, I want to get into the NFL. You mentioned the tanking allegations. Yes. And the repercussions on the betting world. And if anybody wants to know, hmm, we're literally, I mean, I'll say it, we're turning down betting sponsors for this show because we're exclusive with bet regal when they say they were the exclusive betting partner of the rp show it's as ali said from bet regal we're married remember when he said that and we're loyal <laughs> we're right married and loyal so bet regal's our partner but we're like i had to this morning turn down a company and i want to get into that tanking thing because to be honest if i i bet a little bit but not much right if it was the end of the season game and it was the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would bet that they were going to lose because I know that they're going to tank. Do you know what I mean? Right. So why can we not just admit this? Hold the thought. I will. Squirrel. I'll try. <laughs> we'll be right back after this timeout. You're watching the RP Show live from the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital GMC for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or reserve a unit that's already on its way. Get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. 
Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital GMC in Regina. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. <laughs> All right, we're back. How about that? Those are just the cutest darn things. And I got to tell you, they're about six <laughs> inches high. <laughs> And uh, that's at the Calgary Zoo. Moor cats. And every time I see that video, which I shot, yeah. I think that they're going to start out, bust out dancing. I like them. Move it, move it. <laughs> what no, what movie that's it? lemurs. But that's they look lemurs like that. on Madagascar. This is meerkats. That's Timon and Pumbaa. Right? Lion King? Akuna Matata. <laughs> that means no worries. Right. That's the meerkat. Gotcha. It means we got to take another trip to the zoo. Well, I would love to. Maybe the bears have woken up. I didn't realize we should have got a season spot. Two trips Se stays for it. Season pass to the Calgary Zoo. Season pass to Knott's Berry Farm. You know, you only got to go three times to Knott's Berry Farm to pay for your... Yeah. A season pass? I wonder if the zoo will do a contra deal for a couple of plugs like that. One thing Cal Canada needs to do is one fee for bottomless cups at games. I don't know if they do it for alcohol or not, but for pop, what I pay no, it's Knott's Berry Farm, $16. $16. Okay, six, get this. Okay, this, this is going to be a genius marketing tool for CFL teams and sports teams. I don't know what you'd have to charge, but $16, you get a plastic cup. It's a color green, I think, and you get a bottomless pop all day. Go back. 16 bucks. Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. For th is it $34 or $64? It's a... For the year. For a year, endless cup. So it's pink, different color. You bring that back every trip to Knott's Berry Farm, you get free pop. It's either 16 or 30 bucks. Imagine 
a, a season subscription to the beer tap at a sporting event. I don't event. think they'd do it for the... What if it was like 500 bucks? Would you pay it? Some guys would. Some guys burned through that in an afternoon. I would have back in the day. Uh, man, there was some people getting snuckered last night. Oh, Roger Yee, breaking news. Today, Roger Yee in Calgary says, wow, the Stampeders signed Jordan Williams Lambert. Nice. Jay Will. Uh, you know, getting back on track for did, a second. The Stampeders? Did John do that deal while he was in the chair? No kidding, right? Well, Danny Austin, our guy Danny Austin, the guy who infamous, infamously said Rod's going to Rod, hinted this last night on Twitter. I don't know if you saw it or not. Okay. He said there was mutual interest he was hearing between the Stampeders and Jay Will. But before we get into that NFL betting thing in the tanking, tell the folks what you told me in the break about my chat with Huff. Because I didn't know this. I guess I need, I need coaching. I think you're afraid to tell me this stuff ahead of time. I think so. <laughs> tell <laughs> think so. me, man. I think so, you know, because um, I don't want to tell you how to do your job. I'm okay with it. But I love, you know, and, and I wish, you know, the conversations you have off the air, the getting to know somebody, I wish you had those on the air. I mean, anybody can ask them about the, the free agent class. And, and their offensive line. And that's been asked and answered in the media, and it's been written about on three down. And people, your ability to connect with people on a human level is better than anybody. That's what I think is the secret sauce. So when you're asking them about, oh, you've been in Florida, and they're talking about, you know, relating to where Boca Raton is and where he is in Florida. And, you know, he's like, it's awesome, golfing and fishing. And then you're talking about Bob Poley after, afterwards and telling those great stories. So... That's the stuff that I love, and I think the viewers do, too. Because they don't get that anywhere else. Well, Calgary Stampeders, we need to get Huff back down here, and we'll finish off these stories. Because Bob Poley famously said to me that it was quite a pivotal day in Rough Rider history, actually. John Huffnagel, the former quarterback's coach of the New England Patriots, was playing for the Riders. He was one half of J.J. Barnagel. You don't know this, do you? Been, no, but you've talked about it on this show. Yeah, Joe Barnes was one rider quarterback. John Huffnagel was the other. Between the two, they called him J.J. Barnagel, and it was like they were inter- interchangeable quarterbacks, right? It was, a, it was a big thing at the time. Yeah. And I guess if I recall, because I wasn't that old either, like I was like in grade three, yeah. they traded Huff. I think they had to make a decision on one because you always have to pick one, right? Right. And uh, it was Huff that went. So he had been hunting all day with Bob Poley, the polecat, Pheasant hunting south of Moose Jaw, as John just told us. And by the time he got back into the house, phone rang, and it's, uh, they'd been trying to get a hold of him all day to tell him he'd been traded. And he didn't want to leave Saskatchewan. He was stunned. And as Paulie tells the story, and Huffnagel corroborated today, it's a double highway, four-lane Trans-Canada Highway. He drove the wrong way into traffic from Poley's house, which is about 20 miles west of Regina, to the city. Down the wrong way into traffic. He was so rattled. Yeah. And he, he didn't want to leave, and he loved it. And it just, that's part of the reason why I think why John Huffnagel has been so successful as a general manager, because he has those experiences as a player. Most GMs were former players, too, but he's special. Yeah. No, absolutely. And it's stories like that, right? I mean, the connections all over. You don't realize that. You think, here's an American guy who came up to Canada and, you know, is just running the Calgary Stampeders. We don't know those stories, right, from when he used to play. Well, and the other thing is, it was odd that he said, John Huffnagel, I'm surprised you recognized me in that video with Tom Brady. And I'm like, I've been watching you since I was in grade two. Right. What do you mean? Because you got dark hair? Who cares about that? Yeah. So... Today was a pretty big day. I said going in, it was going to be a watershed day, having John Huffnagel down here, and it was exactly that. Yeah. So. Now, see if ha- the canary gets back to the, to the people. And- right. And did we talk about the sports betting component and no. tanking? We'll do that next. Sure. For overtime, okay? By the way, I got to tell you that we are getting down to the nitty-gritty of the Kinsman Telemiracle 50-50 online lotto. Buy your tickets please, because the draw is March 2nd. I'll say it again. If you've been very lucky in life and you don't need the help of the Kinsman Foundation through the gifts of mobility and independence equipment, medical travel assistance, consider yourself very lucky and help those that aren't as lucky as you. Telemiracle.com supports the Kinsman Foundation. Tickets can be bought by anyone over the age of 19 that is physically in the province of Saskatchewan at the time of purchase. Draw date is March 2nd. Just go to telemiracle.com. 
It's not that hard to do. Whoa! See the total? Yeah. Well done. We're going higher, but we're getting down. Don't be those people that wait until the very last moment. Buy yours today, or ideally, as soon as we get off the air. We'll be right back to the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and 24-Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's Lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital Ford for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or check out our in-stock F-150s on the lot right now. Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. It's overtime, live from the Grey Eagle. One last shot of the Calgary Zoo. As Moose said, we got to get there. But I don't think there was a moose there. Did we see a moose? Yeah, I did. Okay, did we? Okay. You were... What were you looking at? I don't know if it was the... Uh... No, it wasn't the grill. It was outdoors. Yeah. I don't know. The moose it was really there, awesome. So. It was really awesome, the Calgary Zoo. Hadn't been there for a long time. By the way, just checking in with the 902 text line, as it is, Taco Time viewer takeover here. Uh, 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 from your mom. Okay. Great interviews today. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Mrs. DuPont. Uh, woot, woot. John in Winnipeg. Great day for the CFL on the RP show. 
Jack Fulton watching says, thank you, Clark, with regards to lining up Duran and John Huffnagel, and I would say the that? same. Chris in Surrey, B.C., did Moose get the Bengals jersey? Yes, it arrived, and uh, we'll unveil it tomorrow. Okay, I was going to say, is it in your room? We'll unveil it. Yeah, I got the box in my it's room. It's nice. Yes. Very nice. Jeff Kozak writing in. Uh, hopefully we'll be there for the Habs game. We'll come say a quick hi. Jeff from Regina is obviously coming. Are the Montreal Canadiens coming through here? I have not looked past Saturday with regards to our personal schedule. I don't know. It's interesting that everybody wants to know what we're going to be doing over the next five weeks here at Gray Eagle and in Calgary. I don't know. I don't know past Saturday. By the way, original 16... An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. A superior taste with only 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Pick up at a store near you today. How are we doing for time? Oh, we got time. Clark, please load up. Yeah, load up the um, update thing. And before we go, yeah, I'm loading my update. So, Darren, your thoughts, please on the NFL tanking allegations by Brian Flores and Hugh Jackson, by the way, in Cleveland, and its effect on betting. That's the biggest part of the whole thing is the, is the tanking allegations because it could affect betting, right? I mean, I don't know if, if we're going to actually see a lawsuit because there's so many individuals that bet on those games that would be part of a class action potentially or, or you know, whatever it would look like. But that's the most dangerous thing because you get into Pete Rose territory, right? When, when, when guys are actually tanking games, losing games, and it's affecting the outcome, I think that's, that's more dangerous for the NFL to get into because there is betting money involved. There's you know, tons of sports betting um, you know, bookies and properties that are taking in these bets that are either winning or losing a lot of money based on what's happening. And if you're controlling that, it's cheating. And so that's way, 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 way worse. And uh, that's a bigger mess for the NFL. Well, and that's not to dismiss the racial no, of course discrimination not. allegations. And I'm not, putting, I'm not saying anything untoward of what you've just said, because yeah. even the black coach friends of mine are saying they don't expect it to change. Bringing it to light by Brian Flores is the best thing that we can do about it. Where we go from here, I'm not sure. It's just harder to prove, too, right? I mean, it's really tough to prove, um, but this becomes a bigger mess because it, it could end up being really expensive. Yeah, and by the way, not saying it shouldn't be dealt with, just saying... It probably won't. That's what they're saying. Anyways, let's go, and I hope I don't screw this up. You ready, Clark? Get the timer ready. The uh, Great Western Original 16 Ultra Update, and here we go. What a time to be alive, especially if you're a fan of the Calgary Flames. Cowtown is jumping these days, what with their team riding a seven-game winning streak following Tuesday night's 6-2 drubbing of the Columbus Blue Jackets. It was a party in the Saddle Dome. Alberta COVID restrictions held the capacity to 9,600 fans, but you wouldn't know it. The Flames jumped out to an early lead, and the fans were dancing in the aisles pretty much all night long. And unlike the last time we were here, the concessions and beer lines were open, and that put everyone in a carnival-like mood. It was fun, and for a city that's had a lot of bad news over the past couple of years, they really got something to cheer about. And they were loud. They know hockey in Alberta. And people gasped each time one of their stars grabbed the puck like Johnny Goudreau, Matthew Kachuk, or newcomer Totter Toffoli. It all turned out nice again, except for the Blue Jack. I spoke with some of their staff before the game, and they were still stinging from the last time these two teams met, a 6-0 Calgary win in Columbus. This game wasn't much better for the Blue Jackets, although it was nice to see Regina product Cole Sillinger wearing number 34 for the Blue Jackets. He told us... In the summertime, he was going to Columbus to make the team at 18, and I'll be darned if he didn't just do it. I've always wanted to host a show from an NHL market, and it seems we're joining the Flames bandwagon at just the right time. And it all turned out nice again. Godlike. That's the best you've ever done, I think. It's just the day. So what happens when you're in a good mood. You've been in a really good mood today. It was because I went to the Flames game last night. I'm going to say it. I got out, I got some fresh air, saw my friends, mm -hmm. and I guess we'll close this show with how we started it. I, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do, but I would encourage you to get out to a local sporting event 
because that's our world, sports. I don't know what else. If you don't have sports, I don't know what you have in life. I don't yeah. know. I've never had, never not had it. Other than the four months in the pandemic. And that was brutal. Yeah. When there was nothing going on. I know. I literally say if we could get through four months with a sports talk show with nothing going on, we can get through anything. Yeah. Right? We never once had a conversation about what are we going to talk about today. You know, during that, which is great. But, no, it is so nice to have the games back and be able to get to the building. And, you know, we walked around. We did a lap of the concourse and saw Ryan Leslie and Corey Sarich and some of our other friends. And, you know, we saw the fans enjoying, yeah. you know, sometimes double-fisting dome beers, you know. And uh, what did I say to you? I said, one game, I'm going to buy a ticket, come to the game, and i got to have one. I've never had a dome beer, I don't think. So maybe one game. I'll all. drive home. <laughs> exactly. You'll have to do the show the next day <laughs> oh if they're as bad as you say they are. Uh, from the viewers, uh, Ryan in Saratoga, New York, says, how do you pick up, how do you raise a hippo with a forklift? <laughs> Darren in Salt Lake City, Darren Workman, more flamingos. Watch out for the zebras. We, <laughs> we can't put a video of the zebra on the show. No, we, we can't. Maybe a RP show after dark. Exactly. Stacy Shim, last minute. Last minute of play in the RP show. Uh, Stacy in Access World Headquarters watching says, wait till stampede season. Rod will be bull riding. Approved. Nope. I retired at Steers. Not going to do it. Adam Schultz says, I can't wait to see how high you have the flames in your top five. That's tomorrow, by the way, because today is Wednesday, and I thought I would get through the Olympic hockey talk and do the top five, bottom five tomorrow. Dan in Winnipeg, great podcast, Rod. Keep up the great work. Ryan in New York, support local sports, no matter how big or small your town is. Hashtag local sports matter. Kelly Rudy tomorrow live right here at the Gray Eagle. Thanks, Huff. Thanks, Duran. Thanks, Darren and our crew. We'll see you at noon Eastern Thursday here on Game Plus. You screwed up, Clark. <clears throat> How about that? Spicy! Bob's your uncle! Oh, good one, Rod! Approved! Hot taste! I like it! Oh, no! Bingo! Let's go!